Look, put one of those on. What? 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 <sighs> Why? Put it on, trust me. Only be for a couple of minutes, but you, you, you're going to want to put one on, and whatever you do, don't go in the other room. Huh? Uh, I, I, I had a, an incredible idea that I thought maybe we could um, build a trap. Okay. A spider fan trap. What? It, it, sound, it sounded good in my head. I'm kind of sure that they're kind of part spider, part elephant. Yeah. So if we could get something that would attract a spider, but on the same scale as an elephant. So I thought we could make like a papier-mâché fly. Right. Uh, with some string. Right. And then we fill the papier-mâché fly with something that would render it, uh, or should we say incapacitate it. And then we've we've got a spider fan. The only thing is my my measurements on creating the kind of knockout gas may have gone awry, and I might not have been using the right stuff. What have you done? I thought we could get away with doing it with uh, caustic soda. What <laughs> the? It was a spare of the moment thing. What was I supposed to do? Oh my god. Everything smells of rubber. <laughs> okay, good for you. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Friday. Uh, we are Maybe Movies. My name is Max. And I am Sam. And we are in the middle, or rather coming to the end of another month of making fantastical films that no one will ever see. <laughs> Definitely not. As you know, we have been looking at uh, First Men in the Moon and The Life Force, and we are up to Act 3 of First Force, which has gone off in a very strange direction. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Before we get to that, um, first couple of quick reminders, again, to... Uh, Everyone out there watching the shows, thank you very much for your support. We, we really do appreciate it, and please do keep coming back. And tell all your friends, and tell your um, tell your vicar. Who were? <laughs> <laughs> but do tell them, tell them all, and then we can be burnt in effigy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, we're going to do a shout out in a moment as well. But before I get to that, just a quick reminder that we do have our poll running, so that you can cast your votes for which is going to be our maybe movie for the month. And we will announce the winner at the pitch meeting for next month, which will be next Friday. Shout out for today is for one of our oldest friends and one of our earliest supporters. Oh, yes. It is for Dean Evans from Billion Bites. Oh, yeah, he did. Dean's a fantastic bloke. He's a filmmaker, a docu documentary filmmaker as well. If you want to see some examples of his work, you can go obviously look at his channel, but also have a look at the original promo that we did for Zadrum, which came out in April, May uh, 2020. Uh, he also did the documentary on the business as well, Hereditator, which is up on the channel. I will stick a link to it below as well. But he's had a bit of a break from, from making content recently and, made, and working uh, recently, and he's now sort of getting back on his game. Oh, excellent stuff. Glad to hear it. Yeah, so please do check it out, and good to see you getting back to work, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> what have we got ourselves into? Uh, yeah, so we've just kind of allowed that the events will parallel the events in Life Force, except in a completely different setting, with uh, characters appropriate to the time period and the locale. Yes, yes. Okay. So please, if you have a, you know, if you have seen Life Force and if you've seen First Men in the Moon and know the period, if you've got any suggestions of you know things that we haven't had a chance to cover, drop them in the comments below. Oh yeah, we'd like to hear what you think. Absolutely. But this is starting to look wobbly, mate. It is. Is there any way of weaponizing Cavorite as a way of getting them off the planet? But 
A, we don't have the time to do it, and B, we don't know if he's got the equipment to do it. it well, yes, I mean, it took a very specific setup. It would take weeks, probably, just to get the furnaces and everything that it needs set up, never mind all the ingredients. Exactly. So the only other option is, could their gambit is to try and get them back into the sphere and shoot the sphere off? Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, because... Because we don't have a sword. Mm. Which means no real way of killing them. Very silly idea. Very, very silly idea. Where's her body? I was going to say really silly idea. Her body's in, in the, the sphere. sphere. It did cross my mind earlier on <laughs> as a possibility. Why not? Uh, Alright, yes. Still got the mail to deal with. <laughs> okay, so we would... By this point then they would have figured out that the, that the male has leapt to another body and then recreated their body from that. Yes. We need... It's a shame. If there was a time delay between them being able to do that, then I would have said what we need to do is we need to destroy his body and then allow them time to grab the bits and throw it back in the sphere. Would be the obvious way. Would be the only way that I could see to do it, but that's not going to work. I was going to say, in the inevitable chaos they're going to find when they return to the, whatever, the plantation, the town. Mm -hmm. How, 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 Lots of chaos people running around. Uh, madness ensues. By this point, the ship will be over overhead and she'll be channeling everything back. I mean, we could certainly allow that Kate would be able to... We don't need the sword. Leaded iron. He, he kills Falada with a bullet. Ah. Now who's going to tell them about the right spot? Have you got a point? If we go because movie and we're going to put somebody a bit like or similar to Falada in here, if we allow him to have... So one of the members of the Royal Society. Yes. Society. All right. He's on sabbatical there after um, after a very taxing period of time spent in the Carpathians. All right. We can do this because movie. Yeah. Because movie. All right. So the British Army turn up. Load of rifles. One of them's going to get it. Unless we want to make it one of our heroes. Oh, I'm going to do it. It needs to be one of the heroes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Which would have to then, I suppose, be Bedford. Mm -hmm. would have Free to be so, yeah. He's one. the man of action. Yes. Cavils with Kate trying to figure out where, trying to speak to her and find out where Matilda May's body is. So I'm thinking it's in the compartment where they hit the chickens. Yes, of course it is. The vampire chickens. <laughs> <laughs> now that would, I, I, you know what, in the 80s they would have been crazy enough to do it. It's, well, we had, we had a, um, a vegetarian vampire duck. Oh, oh yeah, that's very true. Yes, we did. <laughs> Which I must admit, uh, I, th I may have mentioned it at the time, but again, when we did um, when we did Twilight, and they were talking about them being vegetarian vampires. <laughs> oh God, yeah! <laughs> didn't even think. Didn't even think we missed that joke, didn't we? <laughs> so we're saying that Bedford's going to take out the male vampire. Yes. Um, in the midst of the chaos and yeah. Just the absolute mess of, of, of the entire town. Are we saying that we're going to lose Kate at the end? Is she so, I mean, I know it's a slightly different setup here in terms of the relationship between them. I know we've allowed for she's got the psychic connection because she was possessed and it's a residual effect. Yeah. So we, we're happy to go through to the end of this without a Carlson foil who ends up going with them. Because that's one of those nebulous bits at the end of the film that never has any explanation where they say that he was always one of them. They've been here before. Which is kind of, I think... When the I implications was, that they bred with someone. The idea that I had about it being like a, almost like a recon mission. I didn't know whether they could pass a portion of their energy into somebody so that it's passed down through the bloodline. So maybe that's the whole point of what they're doing here, is to see that for somebody to come and find them in a few generations' time. I don't know. The implication is very vague. In, yeah, in the original film, but it does kind of feel like somebody like towards the end when they were writing the script was like, "Oh wow, let's do this right at the end. It'll be fantastic." Yeah, yeah. this will suddenly make sense. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, 
I think it was. I think it was part of their plan. I suppose the implication is it's part of their plan that somebody, in some way related to them, might be there when they returned to facilitate them. Yes. Yeah. Maybe he's meant to be their Renfield. Of course, that would make sense. I don't know. I, I don't know. What do you think, folks? Although his, his outcome is a little bit better than Renfield. Oh, oh, a heck of a, a, heck of a better. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we do that thing, then. Oh, oh. We'll still potentially lose one person because somebody's going to have to be in the sphere to, to do the shutters. Ah, uh, of course. Of course. So, uh, one way or another, it has to be someone. Cavill would probably want to do it because it kind of feels like it's his fault. I was going to say that. Yeah, he's got a conscience. He may be absent-minded as AF, yeah. but he's, he's, he's essentially a good person. And he would probably try to to do it yeah are we going to allow him to I, th- I I can't see any other way around it um I mean they've saved Kate Bedford and obviously they're, they're together so he you know he's protected her he is impulsive Bedford's impulsive enough to do it mm. but as we say Cavill was here it's his responsibility it depends mm. I think it depends on how we want to when we go back into the bit in in present day shall we say mm. um, when we get to our survivor because the, I think I mentioned earlier about this idea about someone weaponizing Cavorite if they had whoever is the survivor has had, has had the formula or whatever for some kind of projectile that they can send to shoot at it when it comes again to send it away from Earth <laughs> mm. but there's no reason why if we give them enough time that Cavor writes the formula down yeah yeah I kind of find it like it has to be Cavor. Okay. There's, there's a, there is a catharsis to it. There is. There is. Sorry, Lionel. Yeah, sorry, Lionel. We love you, really. Uh, Ooh, how about this? Mm-hmm. So we do that. Yeah, Cavor is the one who, who gets into um, gets into the craft. Uh, probably can't close it because we've got all of the energy coming out of it. It's going to be weird. It's upside down with the stream of energy coming out of it. Oh, so yeah. So he's having to kind of dodge around that. Um, all is closing all the shutters it lifts off we then cut back into modern day where we get to see our survivor our survivor is actually Kate okay who hasn't aged that much again as a residual effect from okay yeah yeah I like a bit of a dun 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 yeah kind of so ending. when they first get there we only ever see her from behind or whatever yeah. You never actually see her face. Or she's wearing a veil. Something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And when she takes it off, she's maybe aged 10, 15 years. Yeah. We worked on this through the rest of... While Bedford was alive. And we've developed this that you can look, put into a, into a payload and fire it at um, at the ship to force it away from Earth. Or we could leave it with the Churchill is just coming back into supposedly radio contact from where it's... Or not the Churchill. The ship that they sent out yes. is just starting to come back into range. And that's why... And, and we leave it like that. Yeah, I'd leave it like that. Yeah, I'd leave, I'd leave it like that. We're ready for you this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, once again, folks, once again, I am such a pessimist. I was convinced we were moments from breaking the hell out of this one. Yes, I must admit, I did too. We were literally reaching <laughs> on this one. But, regardless... It's still been a lot more fun than last month. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was... That was... Try and find a thing to do. I dare you. Try and find a thing to do. <laughs> Decision time. Um, I think... Well, I go first, because I think you've got two, haven't you? I've only still got the one star. Uh, right, okay. I should probably have had more, but never mind. Mm. It's the, They're a lot easier to manage, I think, when there's three of us. It's a, Yes, we're all paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit harder. They're both pretty good. It's really... I know, and I'm sure I've said, said this before, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, but there is always that tendency to look at the most recent one that we've done because that's the one that's freshest in your mind. Mm-hmm. But again, in this case, I'm probably going to have to say um, First Force. Okay. Because we've ended up with not only a film that is a, a, parad- or a parallel to Life Force, but it's almost like we've created a prequel to Life Force. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure uh, the, the fanboys would have a field day with, you know, 
is this this, but is this this, but is this this as well? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 exactly. There's a lot that we've glossed over because we simply don't have the knowledge of the of the locale and how we could use that. No, that was that was the very short and sweet version. Somebody else figured it out. You go do it. You, there, you. Writer person. You go fix it. <laughs> Life in the Moon is, again, it, it works, but if that one... We've had to play a bit fast and loose with our characters a bit. Again, what we were saying there about Kane kind of losing his rag a bit and things like that, mm. which is a little bit out of character for him. Yes, okay, he has been shot into space, which he's never done before, but he's in the SAS. You know, we were because moving in quite a bit there. Yeah. That's another C, by the way. He's Colonel Colin Kane. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that writer must have had a serious fetish for the letter C. At least Carlson's Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, but yes, I think I'm going to go. Um, I'm voting for First Force. Um, <laughs> I was probably going to lean on the side of Life of the Moon. Uh, but now I think about it, especially when you've sort of laid it out that way, I think it might have been because um I felt like we had to work harder for it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's more earned. But having said that, you present a compelling argument. Yeah, I'll go with First Force. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So uh, that's two votes for First Force. Uh, Now it will be over to you at home. So please go back and have a look over the episodes over the month. Give it a thought and check out our Twitter, our Patreon if you're on there. And also, hopefully, our Instagram as well. I only say hopefully because the Instagram ones, you can only really tend to do them on the story. Ah. So that one will only be up for like 24 hours. Yeah, cast your votes. And at the pitch meeting for June, we will uh, announce who is the overall winner. Fantastic. Indeed. So that's us done. Yes, it, it is. Yep, that- I think we should try and stave off the sleep. Okay, how are we going to do that? Assume the position. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, and... Ba-ba-ba, ba-ba-ba, ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-